Hi, my name is Stephen Murdoch. I'm a senior here at University of North Carolina at Pembroke. Um, I'm taking Geography of North Carolina, and this is my research project for the PURC student conference. My research project is on the uh, main physical landscape and how the Laurentide ice sheet formed nearly all of the physical landscape you find in Maine. So the Laurentide ice sheet is a massive, massive ice sheet. Um, has existed in North America for about 2.5 million years, but the last glacial maximum of the LGM was about 35,000 years ago. Um, a lot of the um, landscape was caused between then and now. Um, anytime, anything that happened before that doesn't matter, frankly, because it essentially got erased when the last, the last time the late Laurentide ice sheet expanded um, down our way. So here, you can see a picture here. Um, we've got the coast, excuse me, the outline of the Laurentide ice sheet. Um, the one we're most focused on here is the Labrador sector, which is the southeastern sector. This is what is, um, covers most of Maine, and um, you can see here it kind of goes down almost into Tennessee. I believe it covers most of Ohio. Um, uh, so this was the last glacial maximum. Um, goes out quite a ways. Um, at the time of this glacial maximum, the LIS was estimated to have enough water to drop global sea go, um, level by about 40 meters, um, which kind of explains some of the like the, la the rapid up and down you see in the uh, sea level changes. So the so here we have the um, the last time the glacier the Labrador glacier was covering the state of Maine it was was roughly about twenty twelve um, eighteen thousand years ago um, eighteen thousand years ago was the last time we had the state of Maine at least was under yeah, an ice sheet um, we're gonna go real quick through this little slideshow and it'll show you the just uh, general progression as the ice sheet retreated. And as you can see here at 13,000 years ago the current coastline is finally out from underneath the um, uh, the, ice, uh, the Labrador Glacier. You can see here it's slowly retreating back into the Hudson Bay until about 8,000 years ago, it's nearly extinct. And finally, at 5,000 years, it's just covering some islands up in northern, uh, northern Canada. So the Lorne Ice Sheet was huge. Um, it weighed an immense amount of weight down on the continental crust of North America. Um, Whenever that much weight is on the crust, isostasy comes into play. Um, that is, the crust itself actually fell. So as, it, as more and more ice grew on the sheet, more and more pressure was put down on the ice sheet, and the farther down it went, which rose sea level. Um, as the ice sheet melted, the opposite happened, and sea level technically fell because as the sea level, as the continental crust rose, the sea level was slow to meet with it. So it would raise, sea level would come back up. And then that's why you see these, this sharp decline and then slow moving back up to where it is to the current day. Um, all these little dots are uh, various fossils found across the state of Maine. Um, in various mud flats, glacial lakes, um, uh, glacial like old paleo deltas, um, and so you can see here the the ice sheet kind of yeah it melts, and as it melts, it slowly comes back up here, and this is what we call the isostatic rebound. 
the accompanying phenomenon that comes with the isostatic rebound is what we call glacial floor bulge. So I like to think of this as a pillow. Um, so as you put your pillow, your head down on the pillow, the pillow kind of cradles it around it. The same thing happens with uh, the glacier. As the glacier kind of creates more and more mass, a cradle, the crust kind of like forms to cradle it a little bit with the outside extents being um, raised. As the glacier melts, so as the glacier melts, the um, mass is less. So eventually the crust will start to reform just like the pillow once your head is off of it. It obviously it takes much longer time scale in this sense, but it does it is slowly, slowly flexing back to its neutral flat where it wants to be. Um, and that's how we and that's how we kinda kinda see that current yes, the um, melting of ice sheets is rising sea temperatures, but it doesn't it also this glacial floor bulging also accounts for some sea level rise as the coast is slowly kind of bowing back into place. And as it bows back, the coasts see this, this lowering. Um, so a lot of the main coastline is slowly going back into the ocean. Not just from glaciers melting, but from this poor bulge happening. So the actual features that you find in Maine are across the state. So we're going to start with the Roche Mountains. Roche Mountains are asymmetrical mountains. In this case, um, the north side of a mountain, because that's the glacier came from the north, and as it expanded, as the glacier expanded, it met and overtook a mountain. The north side of the mountain is going to be polished and eroded and weathered. So as that happens, it's coming up the right, uh, the north side. The south side, the the opposite side of the um, the glacial expansion, is getting parts just directly ripped off the mountain. So this is why we have cliff faces all basically facing south southeast, um, because as the glaciers expanded, um, the south sides of mountains were being ripped away. And this is bedrock, so this isn't like it, it, it's it's just bedrock being ripped. That's why you see a lot of um, main mountains with bald granite tops and bald bedrock tops is because, well, Maine is covered in uh, bedrock, um, excuse me, granite, so you see a lot of granite um, mountain tops. So this is the um, Beehive Mountain. It's in Acadia National Park. It's relative, I think it's only like 850 feet tall, but like it's it's all of, it's almost all above the tree line because this glacier, as it came through, removed almost all the sediment. And as we said earlier, it's only 18,000 years ago, maybe 12, I believe it was 12, 12,000 years ago, and that's not a whole lot of time for weathering and uh, for, sa for soils to take hold. So you have a lot of like, you know, a lot of shrubberies and like very, very, very thin soils. The next landscape formation that we see a lot in Maine are what we call cirques. Um, a cirque is when the glacier, kind of similar to the Roche Mountain, except the, except as the glacier comes in, it's coming in at an angle, so it starts to carve away, if you look at your, the screen here, it starts to carve away at the, the mountain. A Roche mountain would come up the front side of it and overtake it and rip it away. In this case, um, the glacier came from this angle and slowly took and just like crunched out and just eroded away this part right here. Um, interesting little bit is that the base of a cirque after all that has been eroded out, is usually the bottom is like also um, kind of like carved out as well. So you get these natural um, deep lakes that are just like um, the they're just they're just small lakes with these natural dams. Um, these are what we call tarns, and Maine has a lot of tarns. The one here at um, in Chimney Pond is. Uh, 
It's a really pretty little lake. It's the same picture we saw at the very, very beginning of the uh, presentation. That was actually uh, Chimney Pond. So both Cirques and Roche Mountains are the parent material of these glacial erratics. So as the glacier comes over and it pulls and it rips out these front sides, it the south facing parts, large boulders are ripped away from mountainsides. As they're being ripped away, they're being carried along the glacier until the glacier eventually just like drops it off because it reaches a certain extent and then the glacier starts to melt underneath it. Excuse me. The glacier kind of like melts underneath it and it just kind of like drops there. So this is why you find a lot of these glacial erratics across the entire state of Maine. Um, they make no sense of why they're, well, we know why they're there, so it does make sense, but it just seemingly you'd be like, what is this boulder doing here? Because there's no sign of, um, there's no way like just normal erosion and wear would expose something like this. Um, this picture right here is um, the it's called Daggett Rock. It's in Phillips, Maine, and its parent material is about 20 miles north. So the next one is called Moraines, and Moraines are built, not really built, but basically they are kind of the leading edge of the glacier as it expands, and then also as it, ex as, it ex um, as it melts, as and as it retreats. So they're really good at telling you where the glacier was and uh, what kind of the glacial pattern of retreat is. So basically as a glacier expands it's pushing sediment forward. It's it's creating this wall of dirt if you will. Um, so that's what we call a, a terminal marine, um, a moraine. It's basically like the end moraine so it's just like all that dirt that was pushed out to the extent. The other way a moraine is formed is the um, all the sediment that was collected in the glacier earlier, like for example, those um, like glacial erratics, are kind of like deposited off into the front of the um, front of the glacier. So as it's as the glacier is like moving forward, eventually it create it creates this wall of sediment and boulders, and kind of just def just drops it off in the front of the, of the glacier because that's the only place where it can go. The next feature is called an esker. Um, these are pretty common in Maine as well. They're um, long, ridge-like piles of dirt, essentially dirt, sand, um, sediments. They're a little bit more finely. These is, this is where um, uh, ice tunnels, essentially, for like as the glacier is melting, water has to go somewhere. So it creates these um, tunnels of water. And these tunnels of water have sediment in them as well and that sediment slowly piles up until it's like essentially just kind of chokes out the the, the um the tunnel but that's where these eskers are formed glacial abrasions um a lot of this is just that that same kind of that north face of it as the glacier kind of comes up over the top of it it um it drags sediment over the top of it um and it creates these um, what we call chatter marks. So you can see here, there's some, these are all, these are created from a glacier just scraping. All these little rocks at some point or another had been under a glacier and just like, just ripping into this bedrock. And that's what causes all these um, markings. The final one I have here is a U-shaped valley. Um, a U-shaped valley is similar to a V-shaped valley. A V-shaped valley is like your typical like river cut down into the sediment. The valley, that a U-shaped valley is that, but the glacier kind of erodes the sides of it until it kind of creates that U-shape. Um, this right here are the bubbles and Mount Sargent. And this is Jordan Lake, but it kind of creates that like nice U-shape. So this is the super, um, simplified super, uh, superficial geography of Maine. It kind of gives you an idea of where it all is. Um, thank you very much for this, uh, for paying attention this far. I hope you kind of learned and you can take what you've learned and find it in other places in where you are. Thank you again.